Hey everyone, welcome back to Homegrown Passion. Well, we haven't put up a video for a little while because we've been on vacation. Went down to Hilton Head for a little while with the family, had a great time. So now I'm all motivated to get back to uh, my deep clean and I'm going to start out with my betel buckets here. And today's video I'm going to show you emptying out the betel buckets, what the different root systems look like, and I'll show you the green bean betel buckets because I reused that perlite a couple times and show you how that looks. And the, of course the tomato one, so it's going to be kind of interesting. Going to give you a little bit of update on the um, strawberries because I was so surprised when we came home there were still strawberries in there for me to pick. I think yesterday I picked another five pounds of them, so it's kind of exciting. So getting ready for the deep clean here, so I'll take you guys through all of that in the next few videos, so stay tuned. So as you guys can see, the whole greenhouse is empty. I've got everything pulled out of here, getting ready for our end of season deep clean. It should be a good exciting time. I want to get everything all sanitized and get ready to plant up for the winter time. That's my favorite time to grow. The other thing that we have coming up is we're going to be replacing the plastic. I know you guys saw in some of the previous videos when we did the light monitors and that, that my plastic isn't letting enough light through. So I do have the uh, plastic here in storage and Crop King is going to come out in a couple weeks and help me replace it. That should be an interesting time. Here's one of my betel bobbins from the tomato plants. You can tell it's kind of dirty there. But I do reuse these. What I do is I soak them in some bleach solution and if they need more twine on them, we rewind uh, them up. And these I've had since the beginning here. They're almost eight years old. So you can reuse a lot of stuff as long as you clean it out. So the first betel buckets here that I'm going to take out are from the tomato plants. And these just have been used once. So I am going to take these out in my handy dandy wagon here that my friend Carol gave me to work in the greenhouse. It's got nice big tires on it and it's easy to pull through to get everything out to take to my tank and dump them out. And if you guys remember when we were setting these up, Doug always likes to secure the main lined to the betel buckets with zip ties so I got to go through and cut these guys off so I can get all my buckets out of here. So I found something I wanted to show you guys. Pulling these betel buckets up off the return line you know because it drains to waste and there's some roots growing down in there and that always happens. So you want to make sure you're able to take apart your return line the drain line here. Doug put some rubber boots on it in a couple different places so I can just take it apart, run a brush through it or just a, a rag or whatever and get all the roots out and get it all cleaned up because you don't want any pathogens down in there since the roots like to grow into there and get up into your plants from the last crop. Okay we got one load up into my wagon here. We're going to take them out through the head house and empty them into the tank. Now these have been turned off. The water hasn't been going to these betel buckets for a couple weeks now. So they're nice and light and it should be pretty easy to empty out. So let's go do it. Okay, see all the roots in there from the tomatoes? They're a little brown because I did have the water turned off for a while. But there's lots and lots of roots in there. And when you're emptying out your betel buckets, remember to get the elbow out. Many times I've forgotten to get those and had to go look for them. So now I need to wash them. Okay, now I'm going to empty out the buckets that had the green beans in them. This uh, growing medium, the perlite and a little bit of vermiculite was used two times for this, so it should be interesting to see what it looks like. And I was bad. I probably should have got these out sooner with all these dead leaves on there. Who knows what's hiding on those things, but we'll get it cleaned up. Okay, here we have one from the green bean. Like I said, the growing medium was used a couple of times. A little bit more difficult to get out of here. And there's nothing really to pull on. So let's see if we can get this out. There we go. Oh yeah, look at that root mass. That's even more so than the tomatoes were. Wow. Now the dark stuff in here is the um, vermiculite. So I like to use the layers of vermiculite and perlite, but this has a deeper root mass since it was used twice. So the green beans, I don't mind doing it this way because they are a shorter term crop, so I'm not so worried about the roots. So probably two is probably the most you could do in here. I was hoping to maybe see if I could get three times out of the growing mixture, but it doesn't look that way. I think twice is the max. 
they kind of cool how the roots they get kind of stuck up there on the side of the betel bucket here let's get those out of here like i said make sure you get your elbows out now, here's another one let's see how easy this one is to get out if it's any easier there it goes one big clunk and the elbow stayed in that time so get that out and one big mass so I thought I'd show you guys why once in a while I lose my elbows dump this guy out and if I wasn't paying attention the elbows not in there so where is it it's hidden so you got to get it out of there so just double check each one so back in the high tunnel for the first time since we got back from our little vacay for a week I can't believe I'm still having lots and lots of strawberries there's some gooey ones in here since they haven't been harvested and the bugs got to them. But there looks really cool. Really getting into this strawberry thing. I think I'm gonna have to harvest these this evening, even though I'm dead tired from driving home. But I think I will. This will be good in the freezer for this winter again. We even got some flowers coming up. Hopefully it stays warm enough in here. And I'd felt the tanks and the A and B and the um, pH tank adjust. And it feels like I have enough juice in there, enough newts to go for another few more weeks without replenishing. Ooh, there's a gross one. Yuck. But not too bad. Haven't been back to check my insect exclusion area for quite a while. Got all these bind weeds here and pulling up. There's a bunch I'm already pulling. They're coming up pretty easy because they're just in the rocks so the roots aren't very deep. But I guess I should check this more often. Not good to have this crap back here. And then I also noticed, because I have this black cover, that it got blown over here and I got a weed growing there. Not good. So I'm going to get this cleaned up and pull these guys out of here. Well, I hope you guys liked today's video about the betel buckets and getting them all cleaned out and seeing what the different perlites look like. One of the next videos coming up is I'm going to do a cleaning of our uh, wet wall here. As you remember, these pads are brand new for this year, so I want to get them all cleaned up and sanitized and ready to go into storage for the wintertime because we won't be using them. So I hope you like uh, watching us. And remember, please leave me comments, questions, and suggestions down below. And we'll see you guys next video.